Stophearing.net. <laughs> may your strength give us strength. May your faith give us faith. May your hope give us hope. May your love give us love. That's how we end each one of our radio programs around here is with a little shout out, a little call out to those who are creating the world in the way that we want it to be because we're called into a world to live our lives and to create the world that we want to live in. So we call that the right on. This is religious radio that's not quite right. But every once in a while, there's some things that are right on. And there actually are so many of them that go on in our everyday lives that I think we should encourage one another to move through the day, to move through our lives and find those things and point them out and say to somebody, there's a right on. It's what in religious circles is often called giving something the amen Mm -hmm. or the agreement, or I join in on that, or the, if you come from a certain tradition, like the sidekick, you might give it a hallelujah. Something like that. Are you mocking my dad? Yeah, no, just a little bit. Just a little bit. No, I'm just, I'm just quoting you and letting you all mock yourselves. <laughs> uh, so, so the right on uh, today goes out to Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson is a musician, mm-hmm. and it's not very often that uh, we think that musicians around here really earn the right on. But here's what caught my attention. I was reading in the, in today's paper copy of the Star Tribune, and in what is called in the newspaper. And only in your Sunday paper, paper mm. exclusive. Now, I don't go. even know if that means it's not online or not. But I have the paper delivered to me to my door. I have a, I have a guy that picks up the paper for me and then brings it to my house. Mm. You can have that too, actually. It's just subscribing to the daily newspaper. Anyway, there's an article in here that talks about Jack Johnson. Now, he's a musician who's often made fun of because of his sort of laid back. Yeah. You know, Hawaiian style, sure. if you know what I'm saying He's mellow. by that. But, but this, this article starts out by saying that there is this real drought of money-making going on in the concert business. In fact, the Eagles and the Jonas Brothers and the Lilith Fair and all of these people have had to cancel concerts because they haven't gotten to a minimum ticket sale. So ticket sales are really struggling. Yeah. Well, it goes on to say that what Jack Johnson is doing, he's playing uh, this Sunday night. He's playing tonight over in Somerset, Wisconsin, over by the Apple River. Mm. Classy dude. <laughs> <laughs> playing over by the by the Apple River, and all of his tickets are general admission for forty dollars, forty bucks. Uh, that's still a lot, yeah. but it's much much cheaper than buying, let's say, a U two concert ticket, or Sting, which charged one hundred and seventy eight dollars for his tickets. And Jack or Johnson, if he Sting has to, tickets. if he has to, easy, if he has to <laughs> do tickets in in other ways in other places that aren't an open open amphitheater, he charges you know no more than thirty five to fifty five dollars. In fact, they even offered him VIP ticket pricing for people to pay extra money that he could earn, and he said no, that's not, that's not the way this goes. So this little article is about here's this guy who says that ticket prices need to be right, and you might be thinking, well, what kind of right on who, who earns a right on for only charging people forty dollars to come hear him play their music? But here's where it goes on. In the article, it talks about the fact that he is really into his ticket pricing because what he wants to do is to encourage more people to be at his concerts because the money that he earns from his concert tours goes to local charities. Mm. See, I think this is, this is interesting. In 2008, he did his concert tour, and it grossed $22 million. Cha-ching. And he donated all the profits from his concerts to local charity, as he puts it. He figures that he makes a comfortable living from his album sales. He had an album that debuted number one on the chart, selling 243,000 copies in its first week. You know, he's sold 10 million albums. And he says this about touring in the summers. He says, I get to go on summer road trip and bring my family with me and all my expenses are paid. And at the end of it, the shows are fundraisers for these great nonprofits doing good things with music and art education and environmental education. And the article goes on to say, it's easy for me to explain to my kids what I do for work. When you really start seeing the tangible things that are happening because of the music for one school in in a a local school district, buying 60 new saxophones, it makes you want to keep doing what you're doing. So here's a guy who could make tens of millions of dollars by touring, and he says, I make a good living off of my album sales and off of the money I make from playing on the radio. So when I go to do tours, I'm going to let that be a kickback to the to, to the local to the local area. What a righteous dude! Now, 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 maybe you should charge more money, right? Maybe that's that's a reason to charge to charge more sure. because it's going to uh, it's going to those good causes. So it's got to make you feel good about a guy who says, you know what? In my profession, enough is enough. Well, right on to that guy who says, I'm going to share. I get what I need, and then I'm going to share this 
with others. Well, the article goes on to describe Live Nation, which is one of the big concert promoters. They bought yeah. Ticketmaster. Oh. So now there's this collusion between the people putting on the show and the people selling you the ticket. Yeah. And so Ticketmaster makes this enormous amount of money. We're now called Live Nation. They make an enormous amount of money, and they really gouge people. And they're really hitting it hard right now. Or they're really being hit hard right now by this downturn. And, and the, the article goes on to, to talk about the $6 million hit that they're taking at Live Nation because Bono had back surgery and they had to cancel the U2 tour. And there's a little side note in here about this, that the U2 is the most expensive rock trek ever. Mm -hmm. So here U2 puts on, and U2 is, I mean, look, I, I know, and I got my issues with the beautiful voice, but they put on the most Jeez. expensive rock tour you can do. And all of that money goes to them and to their, to their peeps. And here Jack Johnson says, you know what we're going to do? We're going to run the cheapest thing that we can, and all of the money is going to be turned back into the community, and it's not for our benefit. And anybody who could be on the verge of that kind of massive level of success and instead turns that back and doesn't charge hundreds and hundreds of dollars to build their own self-worth, they get a right on from around here. And I don't have anything against somebody earning a decent living, but a guy who says, I'm, I make enough, and now I want it to benefit someone else— that gets the right on, don't you think? That's some good karma there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 you kind of have that look on your face, like like no, there's nothing wrong with the with the beautiful voice doing doing what he's doing. Well, you know, you just get on your little soapbox to, to bash you too. You know, I don't I don't think you need to do that to lift really? up uh, Jack Johnson. You, know? you mean you, you mean I don't have to you know step on somebody else's head to to, to get above the water? Well, you is know, that what you're saying? I'm, you're you're saying I, I turned a little negative during the uh, during the right on. It's your radio show. You can do that. Yeah, but, uh, I know. I, I can't help it. But every time I see somebody in the industry doing something good, then there's that other guy standing on the other side of that thing. And well, I don't, it's the money that... I don't know why it bugs me so much. I don't know why it bugs me, but it just bugs me. I think it's because the Christian industry, because the, <clears throat> because the religious community gives this guy so much... Props. Props. Mm -hmm. And I, I've never gotten... I don't, I don't get, and here's a guy like Jack Johnson, who's, yeah, he's a little laid back. He's a little easygoing. You know, he grew his hair out longer so that he could go to state parks and uh, hang out with his kids and not be recognized. Yeah. I just think a guy like that who could be so much more s says to himself, I care about the total impact of what I'm doing on this concert tour. And because that sits in such contrast to what it could be. Sure. So I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to push up out of the water by pushing another guy down here on the YouTube. He's already down at the bottom of the pool. I'm just saying that you don't have to be down there. You don't have to be gouging. You don't have to be looking. You don't have to be exploitive in order to still do good things and put on whole, whole concerts. So this Jack Johnson, I mean, if I could go over there tonight and see, I, I'm not even a fan of his music, really. Yeah. It's kind of a little bit, a little bit sing-songy and a little boring for me. Well, maybe you need to smoke it up to get in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe I need to fully get into the vibe. <laughs> but you know who gets the right on? It's a guy who says, sometimes enough is enough, and I'm going to take the excess, and I'm going to share it with those who need it. So we have this little theme song from the house band, and it goes out to you, Jack Johnson, and to everybody else who's doing the same same thing to the uh, folks over there at the women's clothing swap. You're doing the same thing. You're saying, I've had it. It's served me. It's good enough. Now we're going to give it to those who can benefit from it themselves. So to Jack Johnson, may your faith bring us faith. May your hope bring us hope. May your love bring us love. And that's the call out to all of us, that we'd be these people. As the sidekick says, don't have to push somebody else down in order to rise up above, but rather you say, I'm going to live the kind of life that makes the world that I want to live in. I'm not just going to complain about the things that aren't the way they're supposed to be. Nope, we're going to be a little bit more proactive than that. We're going to be a little bit more intentional than that, and we're going to make the kind of world that we want. So Jack Johnson, have a great show tonight. I'm sure you're listening to the program here. And right on to you and all the good things that you're doing. And to the rest of you, we'll talk to you again next week. We'll bring you out with a little serenade here on Doug Badger Radio on AM 950.